No other ruins anywhere on our planet is surrounded with more controversy than that of the Great Pyramids of Egypt, or indeed its accompanying plateau. There are many factors to consider when it comes to Egyptology. Within academic fields, there are many no-go areas of study. Although hard work and research within permitted areas has taught us a great deal about the previous 4,000 years of the site's inhabitants. Yet regardless of the most astute academic thesis, there remains three, proverbially, large elephants in the room. When it comes to a full or even a mere fraction of an explanation in regards to the origin of these seemingly impossibly huge pyramids remains patiently absent. No accounts, illustrations of any kind from the era exists. It is simply illogical, especially when one considers the sheer feat these structures must have been. We have presented many previous features, polygonal masonry being present on the pyramids. Eroded, yet younger casing stones protecting inner megaliths, clearly of a tremendous age. Salt sediment found encrusting the lower chambers, and so on suggesting not only that the pyramids are much older than currently claimed, but were pre-flood ruins. Thus, questions arise. Just how old are the Great Pyramids? In addition to our study of the pyramids, we have also, in the past, asserted that the Sphinx was originally a lion, which, interestingly, correlates to the following hypothesis with fascinating accuracy. The Orion Theory the coincidence with pyramids aligned with Orion's belt and other significant constellational positions. Bavall and Hancock support the theory, believing the Great Sphinx was begun in 10,500 BC, creating reference to the constellation of Leo and the orientation of the entire complex with the Nile River and even Milky Way, claimed by them as connected respectively. Zeptepi, using similar methodology, put the age at over 13,000 years. These are clearly astonishing proposals, but the current paradigm for their chronology, we feel, is far too short a time span, and due to our own research, which has uncovered evidence indicative of pre-flood origins, copper tools for such an accomplishment a mere insult to intelligence. Yet, thankfully, Due to these various takes on events, their age remains highly contested, and to us, a mystery which is incredibly compelling. The Queen's Chamber, which lays within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, more commonly known as Cheops, has astonished, shocked, and mystified Egyptologists since its mysterious existence was discovered. The intrigue into this elusive chamber along with its mysterious adjacent shafts, comes as no surprise once one understands the anomalous characteristics of their construction. As we have already covered before, massive cover-ups have been suspected as taking place surrounding this mysterious chamber since its discovery. Strange shaft tunnels, set at a 45-degree incline, no larger than 20 centimeters in diameter, run away from this room and no one seems to know why. Not only would these ancient shafts require being hermetically sealed during the pyramid's construction to stop them from becoming blocked, but the excruciating effort that would have gone into making them becomes all the more of a confusing undertaking once you realize they were not even connected to the chamber, but hidden 40 centimeters away from entering the tomb within the walls, completely invisible from the inside of the burial room located deep within the structure. Cheops, noticeably being the only pyramid to have ever been constructed with such shafts, making their addition a popular mystery within Egyptian history. One leads out from the subterranean chamber, two lead out from a termination point some 40 centimeters from the wall of the so-called Queen's Chamber or now popularly suspected to be that of an alien tomb among ancient alien specialists, and two from the king's chamber above. Here is where our story becomes interesting. Rudolf Gantenbrick, famous for actually discovering the blocking door within one of the queen's chamber shafts, which could lead to an as yet undisclosed tomb, has also made other curious discoveries 
within the Great Pyramid. Discoveries which could only be explained by modern covert explorations of tunnels that were supposedly to that point unexplored. Gantenbrick's cache being but one example of these mysterious finds, deep within the tunnel systems in the royal chamber, at a 90-degree turn going vertically upwards, a pile of papers, possibly wrapped artifacts, weighed down with a small piece of timber or stone, possibly another artifact, was discovered by Gantenbrick's robot. Also, during initial location attempts to find access tunnels leading to the Queen's chamber, several blocking stones required removal. After the removal of the seventh block, a modern-era hexagonal steel rods were discovered discarded upon the tunnel's floor. Each section of the hexagonal steel rods measures 2.7 meters in length and was fitted with a round socket, which allowed them to be joined to the next section. In one of the lower shafts in 1872, Wayneman Dixon found three more objects, which could be considered proof of prior covert exploration of the mysterious northern shafts. A copper grappling hook about 5 centimeters in length, accompanied by a small gray-green stone ball and a broken-off piece of a square wooden slat or rod about 13 centimeters long, the wood would today be the most intriguing of his finds. These artifacts suspected to be remnants of the grave robber's tools could have been carbon dated, yet this fragment is the only one of the three to now be missing out of the London Museum's collection. Unfortunately, in his writings, Dixon doesn't say in which of the two lower shafts he actually found the objects, but he mentions them in connection with a northern one. Not only did these obviously highly intelligent people leave evidence of how they must have gotten in, but also traces upon the previous untouched ancient walls of the shafts within Cheops, clearly left by their previous robotic technologies. Other square metal rods have been recovered, along with other artifacts discarded within some tunnel systems deep within the ancient structures, meaning these guys got to the treasures way before we did. Interestingly, reported evidence of covert excavations continues to this day, heavy-duty electrical supplies discreetly running into and trailing deep into the pyramids have been noticed and photographed by some of the more astute tourists. Witnesses to the sounds of heavy machinery being used beneath the site is also frequently reported, yet rarely followed up. It seems it's not a question of whether brilliant minds have achieved the seemingly impossible in penetrating these secret layers but more a question of how and what astonishing finds have possibly been kept concealed. Since the rediscovery of what is unquestionably the most puzzling, astounding, and enigmatic site on Earth, the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, we have been led to believe that what could be described as an astonishingly accurate yet somewhat vandalistic later edition was once put there by a caliph named al Mamad. Now popularly known by its coin title, al mamuns Forced Entrance, this title, although argued as his work, has a pretty compelling tale attached to its possible original purpose. When one actually looks into what an incredible achievement this tunnel once was, it becomes apparent that it was cleverly bored by an ancient people, far more advanced than a 9th century caliph. Additionally, Possible hypotheses have been put forth as to its origins by individuals who may have known of entrances into the pyramid. We in the modern world have either lost knowledge of or have been prevented from knowing about their existence. Hinged doorways made of stone, perfectly counterbalanced to allow an average-sized man to open and close them. Doorways along the structure's north face that, when closed, becomes seemingly indistinguishable from its surroundings. Are there still secret entrances along the pyramid's northern side? Quote, the Great Pyramid, a little way up on one side, has a stone that may be taken out, which being raised up, there is a sloping passage to the foundations. End quote. Written by Strabo in Pyramids and Temples of Giza, Flinders Petri. Yet regardless of these additional, highly compelling investigative leads put forward in addition to an explanation for the tunnel's existence, its remarkable accuracy remains a tough thing for supporters of academia's tale of events to explain. 
As author Ralph Ellis puts it, quote, The main problem with the classical explanation was that Maman's tunnel is rather too accurate for comfort. It tracks into the pyramid in a direct line for the all-important junction between the descending and ascending passageways. It is often cited that Maman had to turn the tunnel sharp left to discover the original passageways, a fact that Ralph had in the back of his mind when they first visited the Great Pyramid. But he ambled down the forced tunnel, rather mystified, because the left turn cited in the literature could not be found. Having backtracked the tunnel and to try again, that left turn seemed to be no more than a slight widening of the tunnel. In fact, the digging was almost right on target." End quote. For how does one know where one is when deep within the passages of such an incredibly huge ancient structure? Secondly, if instead argued as having been started from without, the same problem has to be solved. For how did one know how to create the initial angle? Although it is now the most used entrance and although it has been drawn upon countless plans, to draw an existing tunnel's precise line of descent is far more easier than to have created said precise angle in the first place. And within the Great Pyramid is the remaining half of what has often been used to create a compelling, possible explanation for this tunnel's original purpose. Known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, an anomalous object found within the pyramid, an artifact we have covered in the past. No one can explain how this giant stone object came to be within the pyramid. It would not have fit through the existing entrance tunnels. However, at some time in the pyramid's life, someone smashed into this stone box, took its past contents and the sarcophagus lid, an object that would also have not fit round the turns of the existing tunnel system, yet would have fit through the force tunnel and due to the vandalistic nature of the tunnel itself, could be argued that this damage to the sarcophagi was inflicted by the same group of individuals who built the tunnel, one used to extract the so-called sarcophagus's lid. Is this the real past purpose of the tunnel? And if created by a caliph in the 9th century, how did he tunnel so accurately on target? And additionally, where is this lid now? Was this tunnel, like the many different layers of casing stones indicate, built by a later yet also lost civilization? One who flourished far before even the ancient Egyptians? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Hey guys, Matt from Mystery History here. So today I wanted to share with you a confession. A confession by this man. His name is Dr. Allah Shaheen, and he is one of the world's leading Egyptologists. He is also head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department. He rubs shoulders with top Egyptian government figures and members of the Egyptian State of Antiquities. If anyone knows about Egypt's most inner-kept secrets, it's this guy. In December 2010, he was hosting a conference to a select group of delegates about ancient Egyptian architecture when he let something slip. He admitted to being complicit in the covering up of an astonishing secret. He has since retracted the statement and is now denying he ever made it. However, during the conference, a handful of press reporters were present. They all ran the same story, shortly after the conference, all quoting the same remark making it rather difficult to believe that he didn't actually say it. In what I can only imagine was a misjudgment of trust, when questioned regarding the possibility of alien involvement in the construction of ancient Egypt, he not only confirmed this to be the case, but confessed to knowing, and I quote, there's still something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. In a previous video, I shared how the tomb of Osiris, once believed to have been a mythical god from Egyptian legend, a belief Egyptian antiquities would like to keep alive, was actually discovered recently. The tomb was found by traversing an access tunnel system just a few inches in diameter. From the moment this impossible access passage was discovered, they quietly knew they had found something amazing. The moment Egyptian authorities finally managed to get a robot with a camera into the tomb, a complete media blackout descended upon Egypt. Walls were constructed around the tomb and no information regarding the find was shared for several weeks. When the world was eventually allowed near the site, the tomb was found to have been conveniently empty. 
No explanation as to how grave robbers could have possibly got into the tomb has ever been produced. Was Osiris an alien? Was our previous research bang on the money? Even in Egyptian legend, the figure known as Thoth was said to have allowed beings such as Ra and Osiris to exist in our realm. Were ancient Egyptian artists accurate in their depictions of these beings as hybrids? If, as Dr. Allah Shahid states, along with ancient Egyptian literature, that there is indeed something otherworldly under the Great Pyramid, could it really be a portal? And if it is, why hide it? Regardless of what it is, they are definitely hiding something. What otherworldly thing do you think is hidden under the Great Pyramid? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care.